Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. So recently a study was published looking at cardiovascular safety following vaccination and the results are quite frankly shocking. Some people are probably going to be devastated by these results and those people who are going to be devastated are anti-vaxxers who like to scare people by claiming that vaccines are causing increases in various cardiovascular events. The reason these people are going to be devastated is because the study clearly shows that the lies they have been grifting off are bollocks. So this is a study here, cohort study of cardiovascular safety of different COVID-19 vaccination doses among 46 million adults in England. So it's a rather large study and it's essentially looking at the whole adult population of England and specifically 11 different types of cardiovascular events and whether or not they increased after COVID vaccination. And they've looked at this by brand of vaccine and also by dose. So whether events occurred after the first dose, after the second dose, or after a booster dose. And they looked at this for six months following each dose. Now, it's well known that a lot of things are going to affect whether or not you have a cardiovascular event. So they also adjusted for a number of confounders. And these confounders included age, sex, ethnicity, medical conditions, medications taken, whether or not the person had been hospitalised in the last year and whether they had COVID before the start of the study. Now, the cardiovascular events that they looked at included the rare events that are known to be increased following vaccination, like, for instance, myocarditis and pericarditis following Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. And this chart clearly shows that these do increase following vaccination. The chart is showing the adjusted hazard ratio compared with unvaccinated people over time by dose with the different brands in different colours. If it's above one, it means that there is an increased incidence at that time. And the vertical lines are the 95% confidence intervals. So if these don't cross the horizontal line, it means the difference is significant. If you can't see a vertical line, that just means that the confidence interval is very narrow. And if you look at dose two, you can see that the adjusted hazard ratio for the Pfizer vaccine, which is the red line, is above one in the first few weeks after vaccination. And this is exactly what you would expect. So it's a good sense check that the methodology that they've used to control for confounders is fairly sound. The other rare event that is known to occur after COVID vaccination is vaccine-induced thrombosis with thrombocytopenia, which is known to occur after the first dose of viral vector vaccines like the AstraZeneca vaccine. This can also lead to a very specific type of a blood clot known as intracranial venous thrombosis. And if we look at the data for the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is shown in light blue for dose one, we see that the hazard ratio is above one for both thrombocytopenia and intracranial venous thrombosis, which again suggests that the methodology is quite sound. So these are known adverse events that were identified not long after the rollout of the vaccines began. But according to anti-vaxxers, there are other side effects that the lizard people are trying to hide from us. For instance, anti-vaxxers claim that COVID vaccines increased your risk of heart attack and stroke. So let's have a look at the data for that. As you can see, there is no increase in the rate of either acute myocardial infarction, 
otherwise known as heart attack or ischemic stroke after any dose of any vaccine. The other thing anti-vaxxers like to go on about is blood clots. And we've previously discussed all the crazy people showing pictures of standard post-mortem clots and claiming they are unusual or in some cases people showing pictures of things that aren't clots and claiming that they are. Like, for instance, John Campbell, who posted a picture of a vein and claimed it was a clot with tensile strength. So let's have a look at what the data shows for clots. Now, we've already discussed the rare cases of intracranial venous thrombosis that are known to occur after the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, but these are very rare. The more common types of clot are pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis. And you can see the data for these on this chart here. As you can see, there is no increase in the incidence of either type of clot after any dose of any vaccine. Now, they did also include other types of cardiovascular events in this study, and I'll provide a link to the paper so you can Look at them at your leisure. But suffice it to say that with the exception of the rare events that already were known to occur after vaccination, there was no increase in cardiovascular events following vaccination. Now, you may have noticed that for the majority of vaccines and doses, not only was there no increase in cardiovascular events following vaccination, there was also a decrease. And here's just one example that I've blown up so you can see. So what's going on here? Firstly, the decrease is most apparent in the first week or two following vaccination. This is likely to be due to what's known as the temporal healthy vaccine effect or the time-varying healthy vaccine effect. This occurs because people who are suffering from an acute illness or who have been hospitalised for some reason are unlikely to be vaccinated until they get better. And these people are more likely to suffer from cardiovascular events. This makes a group of people who have been vaccinated healthier than the rest of the population for a short period of time because they don't include the acutely ill. So that's the first week or so, but we can see that although the rate is closer to the unvaccinated, after that, it still remains lower. Now, there's two possible explanations for this. There could still be some residual confounding that the authors haven't accounted for, but it could also be related to the fact that COVID is known to increase cardiovascular events and vaccination is known to decrease the chance of this happening. A large number of studies have shown that cardiovascular events increase following COVID. And this is just one example here. This study looked at the risk of a number of different cardiovascular complications following COVID over the next 12 months. The chart on the left is the hazard ratio and anything to the right of the vertical dotted line means an increased risk. The chart on the right shows the excess burden per 1,000 people. As you can see, a number of different cardiovascular and thrombolytic events, including stroke, myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis are all increased after COVID. And as I said, there are many, many other studies showing the same thing. This paper here, for instance, is actually a review paper summarising the various other studies looking at cardiovascular effects post-COVID. And this study is one of many studies showing that cardiovascular events are reduced after COVID in people who are vaccinated. They looked at the effect of vaccination in decreasing the risk of thrombolytic and cardiovascular events following COVID at different time points up to one year. And the results are shown in this figure here. 
if the horizontal bar for each event falls to the left of the vertical line, that means vaccination reduces the risk of that event. And as you can see, there was an overall trend to a decreased risk of cardiovascular events following COVID in vaccinated people. And this was most apparent in the first 30 days following COVID. For some events like deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism and heart failure, the incidence was significantly decreased by vaccination at all time points. So the results seen in the latest study are consistent with the results of previous studies. Importantly though, this study isn't actually claiming that vaccination decreases cardiovascular events. It is a safety study that shows there is no increase in cardiovascular events beyond the rare events that are already known to occur following vaccination. And this means that anti-vaxxers making claims that vaccines are causing heart attacks and strokes and various other things are simply talking bollocks. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a copy or sleepy little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.